color. Happy with that so far? Yeah, it's looking good. Okay, so we're going with lactic acid? Yep. And that the pH where we want to, we want a pH of around 5.4. But this is the first time you use lactic acid? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. That's what I wanted. You're blue for real. Nice colour to that head. Mm. Mm. And that's the hot basket you just put in place? Yeah. Uh, hot. Yeah. Uh, hot filter. Hot filter. Basket. Which one's that? So now we've got the uh, fermenter out, aka Sputnik. And it's being sanitized. You can hear the CIP spray ball inside in there. So it shouldn't be going too fast now. See again. The, the, the faster the flow, the more it spins and the more it gets coated. See it again? So everything, you want everything to get completely coated and sanitized. It. And you've got that, that star sand stuff. Yeah. So Incredible. star sand stuff in the chrome bucket through the pump. Woo, yeah, buddy. <laughs> and sanitizing the fermenter. So if I lift it now, it'll get you know, sprayed everywhere. And so that fermenter, what's the capacity of that fermenter? Uh, this is a half a barrel, so 17 gallons. Okay. Meanwhile, stage left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got a boil as well. It's boiling now. Yeah. Okay. Just the time. And after it's boiled, it needs to then be cooled to 25 degrees as soon as possible. Yeah, 21 we're going to go for. 21. But we'll see, it's as low as we can go. And then... So you're going to try and do that as soon as possible, and then you add the yeast? Yep. Yeah, and so then... all of that into there, 21 degrees, add the yeast, let it ferment for two weeks, roughly. Right. So there's a few bits to do in that time. But... Cool. Yeah. Nice bit of whirlpool action going on there with the riptide. Seconds away from the end of the boil. And then we're gonna chill it right down. It's 21 degrees, or near enough. Yep. Rolling. Right, so now we're ready for the transfer. Very good. From this bad boy. That's gonna activate the pump. Stage right. Ready? Are we good? Yeah. Whoa. Got contact. Looking good. And that's going over into Sputnik over there inside the fridge. I mean the fermenter. Huh. How's it looking? Yeah, nice. And that's currently at 23.5 degrees centigrade. Pretty good. I wanted to get it to 21, but 23.5 will do. I'll work out the conversion, obviously, on centigrade to Fahrenheit for our American brothers that are going to be watching this. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be many of them. I imagine this is going to go global in a big way. Instantly. <laughs> Quite often at this point, I realise I've left the tap open at the bottom so it all just drains out without me realising. Smooth. <laughs> tap, you can tap down now and spot it. How long should that take? Um, not long, not long at all, a couple of minutes. How long have we been at this now? I mean, we started, what? I had a load of stuff 4 PM? I had a load of cleaning to do, didn't it's I? It's about 4pm, and now it's coming up to 10pm. Yeah. So that's it's not bad. bad, really. Well, you went home for a lie down, didn't you, halfway through? So. Uh, no. So 
looking good. So at this point, you want to get as much oxygen as you can in there, so that's why I don't mind it splashing about. Oxygen? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, at this, point, at this point, you want oxygen in, in the beer, because um, the yeast likes work, which has got like loads of oxygen in We've it. got the yeast waiting down here. <laughs> There it is. Huh. Looking good to go. You can hear it purring. Yeah, so I just go for, I'll try and make it splash as much as I can so I haven't got, the, I haven't got an oxygen tank in the, in the stone they use or anything like that. Yeah, maybe one day. Is that, is that the next purchase then? No, no, there's a few other things I want to get before that. There'll be another video where we talk about what he's bought so far. <laughs> How much, where from, what his wife knows about it and what she doesn't, etc. <laughs> she's not allowed in here. And she's more mum and dad you're worried about. <laughs> Mummy's boy. <laughs> she cut that out. You cut that out, my I think Ed mentioned earlier that they've got this, uh, we've got this chiller over here, this chiller. We used to run mobile bars, so that's a chiller that's just used as part of a draft system to serve draft lager, cider, etc. He should have had it running for, well, probably even overnight to build up the ice bath, but Mr. Prepared didn't and ran it about an hour before we uh, needed it. Need. An hour is optimum. Wow, is it? Whoa, what's that? That just means it's kind of, can you kind of hold this? Got a bit of noise going on over there. Can you hold this? Hands set. Hold. You gonna hold that? Yep. Hold that like that, just don't want to have to come out. The sun? Is that like that? Yeah. It's a nice head on it. Yeah. Nice colour. Sort of like espresso foam. Yeah. Looks like he's bleeding the pump and there's beer spilling on yeah. over the floor. Is there any coming out of the, the hose? Uh, yeah, it's trickling out. All right. Actually, it's not, more, it's not really a trickle, it's more of a steady flow. Okay. Yeah, now, now, it's quite a, now it's quite a big flow. Yeah. You need to get a GoPro for the action shots. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's all she wrote, son. Oh, how, how many litres is that? That should be about 19, sorry, no, 38 gallons. Did I get in there? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, we're in gallons now? Yeah. How long did we release this earlier? Sorry, no, oh, it's been a long day. Uh, 38 litres. Cool. Yeah. So what's that, about 10 gallons, possibly? Here we go, the hot basket. Ugh. I guess I can play around with this. Ugh, that's like, that's like porridge. <laughs> Look at that state of that. I don't think Ed filmed the bit where he actually put the hops in the basket. Well, at what point did you put the hops in the basket? Uh, 30 minutes into the boil. So it's 30 minutes, minutes into the boil. Yeah. As you can see, um, all drained out and uh, safely stowed in Sputnik over there. Let's kind of look at Sputnik. I really need to get up with the expressions. The yeah, fermenter. There were two, two hot additions. One was at. Um, and the fermenter is just inside a regular household fridge, by the look of it. It's called a brewing chamber. Uh, it's Fermen a fridge. Uh, it's chamber. a fridge. Is that the temperature up there? 16.4? 16.3? What was that you were spraying? Oh, the old oh, sand. Star sand. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to grab a sample from the sample valve here because obviously I want to take an original gravity reading. So, I sanitised it earlier, obviously. Um, he just sprayed something if you couldn't see it behind him. With the old uh, star sand then, once again. Now I'll put the yeast in, this is the last bit. So talk about your yeast. So it's obviously been, well... You say you cultivated it yourself? Yeah. Well, from from... 
a pack that I bought ages ago, but I keep reusing. So it's 1056 American ale yeast by Y yeast. Um, you get 100 billion cells in a standard packet, but obviously, it, well, not obviously, but it declines over time. So um, It declines over time? It uh, decreases, doesn't it, that the yeast dies off. That's all right. You, 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 you can cut this bit out. This isn't a quiz. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in here, for this recipe, we need about 650 billion cells. Which is why I've had billion? To, yeah. Which Holy is why I've had cow. to put on stir plate. Yeah. So... What would you need if you were making like 800 pints? Yeah. Uh, I don't even well, think about it. Yeah. That's a lot. Is there even a number that high? Right, so you go to the yeast. What does it smell like? Yeasty. That was sitting there. Done. How's the smell? Is it good? No, no, is it? <laughs> yeah, that's alright. Sounds good, Smith. Miffle, isn't it? Ay, 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 yeah. Okay, and then we just seal up the fermenter. I've gone for a blow off, which is fun. Insert it into this tube in. Up, down, up, down. Uh, mi fuente. Uh, did we speak earlier about how much Sputnik cost you? That's, uh, like your most, that's the most expensive thing in your arsenal, isn't it? Yeah. 700 quid? Uh, huh? I won't tell mum and dad. <laughs> Yeah, brand new there, 799, but I didn't get a brand new. Like, you know you're approaching 40, right? You do not need to be worried about <laughs> telling mum and dad how much you spend on stuff. Approaching 40, I'm worried. Well, I'm obviously going to tell them anyway. 40s. Wow. I'll let the viewers be the uh, judge of that. <laughs> uh, you're just, so you're just clamping the lid. She's all sealed up, son. So is that it then? Yep. Okay. And then we've got this little temperature probe which I can plug in there. It's a thermo well. Okay. Which is basically a hollow metal spike that sticks into the middle of the tank. So oh, right. So, and it just trails outside the fridge yeah. and up there to tell you what it is. That's it. Okay. So, and it's going to be in there for two weeks? Um, yeah, about two weeks, roughly. Um, That's it, is it? Yep. Just going to set the temperature on this. The recipe dictates that it requires. I've got to ferment it at 21 degrees. So um, obviously it's it's a regular, like you said earlier on, a regular kitchen fridge. But it's got the little sort of greenhouse heating element in there. Okay. Which plugs into this little uh, thermostat controller here. So you've got this has got two 13 amp outputs, one for the fridge for cold. Mm -hmm. One for the eating element for hot. Okay. So you set that at whatever temperature you need it. Say 25 degrees, it'll obviously, at this time of year, it's October, you're going to need the heater. Yep, <laughs> you're yeah. not using the fridge side of it, so the heat's so set to? off and on. Uh, 21 degrees, we're going to want to that. Okay. It's pretty much what it's, yeah, it's 21.5 at the moment. So that's it. So it's pretty much spot on. So the yeast are going to work their magic. Yeah. And make this miracle happen. Now we'll have a beer to celebrate. Cool. Done. Um, So we're going to take an original gravity reading. An original gravity reading? Yeah, so we can tell, so we can tell what the ABV is. We're looking at 1066 and we've got 1064, 1065. It's pretty good. What? Okay. What does that mean? Was that a puzzled look? Yeah, what does it mean? It's telling us the amount of sugar in there. So uh, okay. to, to, to work out the ABV. I knew that. I just wanted people to know that they were watching this. <laughs> Yeah, so we know how much sugar is in there now. Mm -hmm. We need to take another reading once it's finished fermenting. That'll tell us how much sugar is left in it. And it's it's an equation to figure out using the two numbers that you can work out what the uh, alcohol by volume is. So what's your inclination at the moment? What, how strong it's going to be? Yeah. I'm hoping around six and a half, seven. Okay. Yeah, 7% ABV, I hope. Okay. Yeah, so it's been fermenting, isn't it? We did two weeks at 21 degrees, and then we did um, obviously dumped the yeast uh, a couple of days into that, or no, about five, six days into that. And then at the end of the two weeks, we then uh, got the temperature down to 16 degrees for another week, and here we are. That is a new walk on the t-shirt, by the way. I apologize to anyone viewing. I'm not sure that. it's officially licensed by 
Disney or... Okay, well, let's Lucas not talk about it anymore just in case we get sued. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so what are we doing now? Uh, now we're going to take a, um, a little sample to check the gravity, the final gravity of it. Okay. My head's shining from back there. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> um, I remember tasting it when we, uh, just after we boiled it. Here we go. Okay. You want to bring it a bit closer in? Let's have a look at it. There you go. It smells pretty strong. Does it? Yeah. That's what you yeah, want, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, around 6-7%. It's a bit in the old hydrometer. Yeah, we want 10-24. It's obviously got lactose in there, which interferes with the reading a bit. So final gravity, 10-24. Good stuff, happy with that. Yeah? Yeah, spot on. So you sort of just, go, just go back to the fact that that's been fermenting now for three weeks. Is three weeks, you said it's maybe a little bit on the long side? No, not really. That's no, probably about right, I think. Obviously. What what dictates the period of time? Um, well, for, for primary fermentation, you want, to, you want to ferment it for at least a week for primary. And then obviously, some people don't do a secondary, but secondary with a conical fermenter like this is really easy to do because you just have to dump the yeast out. So I'm I was really hoping that question was going to stump you, but it hasn't. <laughs> Not What's that? I was hoping that question was going to stump <laughs> you, but it hasn't. Well, this is just how I understand it. Other people might disagree. Probably I guess not. we'll find out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're just sanitising? Yeah. So I, I normally like to do at least one week for primary and normally at least sort of five days for secondary. That's what I normally kind of go for. So you want to talk about these jars that you've got down on the left there? Yeah. Yeah. So with this, um, we've got 38 litres thereabouts in there. So I'm going to halve it. So 19 litres is going to go in the keg. So I've got the sanitizer ready to go right here. So and that, hold, that holds what? That holds uh, about 20, 22 litres, I think, maybe. We'll find out. And the cost of one <laughs> of those bad boys? Uh, it varies. Um, I was quite... I got those um, second hand, and they were about 40 quid, which is <laughs> quite a good... It's not, it's not too bad at all, really, but you can pay... You can pay up to sort of 100 pounds or see people charging for them on, on eBay, which is a lot. Um, so yeah, half the batch in there is going to go in there, 19 litres, and then the remaining 19 litres, I'm going to just sort of play around with it a little bit, so we've got a few... So stage right, we've got... Yeah, got a few little different uh, flavour additions, so that is 10 shots of espresso, so the milk stout's going to go on top of Bring that. it in a bit closer. There we go. That's it's all, pre all prepared earlier. Yeah, 10 just shots. Just Taylors of Harrogate? Yeah, the Taylors of Harrogate, yeah, I think it's the rich Italian, I think. Alright. Uh, and then... This one here. Um, this is my ten, personal favourite. Yeah, this is ten shots of espresso, but I've also melted two one hundred gram bars of galaxy chocolate in there. So I thought it'd be quite interesting. <coughs> galaxy milk chocolate. Galaxy milk chocolate. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got two hundred grams of ground coffee just to see. This obviously looks like a hell of a lot. So here's a question: What dictates the amount of coffee, chocolate, gingerbread that you're putting in the bottom of these jars? Like the, the amount that I put in there. All oh, right, that's, that's all it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. So you just think. I, I just thought, yeah, that, that sounds like a good amount. So this is an experiment then. Yeah, this is not. Yeah. This is this complete freestyle. Yeah. So a few weeks down the line, when we try them, we think you could do a bit more. Because coffee. that, let's bring that coffee one up again. That's a lot of coffee. That's a lot of coffee. Yeah. It's I mean, that's gonna that's gonna knock someone's socks off. So maybe which... one of these before going into work will be jacked up yeah. the whole day. Right. We're just about to make the magic happen. Here we go. Let's go down to ground level. Um, what's in the cylinder? In the cylinder or in there? Yep. CO2. Okay. Just 100% CO2. Yeah, yeah, 100% CO2. So what we've got, we've got CO2 going in there, sorry, out of there. Um, I'm going to keep it at about 2 to 3 psi. It's going to go in the top of the fermenter. And it's just going to sort of slowly push the beer out. Okay. Um, so yeah, we fill up the first Demi John, which is one of the gingerbread ones. Demi John, that's the one. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, and I'll switch it to the keg and we'll fill the keg up as okay. well. All Excellent. right. Yep. Sorry if you can hear some wind noise, by the way, but it's blowing a bit of a hoolie here at the moment. Um, 45 miles an hour outside. So you're now filling up the coffee one. I'm getting a hell of an aroma of coffee in here. Yeah. Um, I'm, I've got high hopes for this one because we're, um, we're about to film a video of us tasting a very well-known uh, Imperial Stout coffee infusion. A speedway. A speedway um, by Alesmith, which we we're very excited about. So this is right up my street. So ex excited to taste them alongside. 
It's thirsty work as well, isn't it? It is thirsty work, <laughs> it is. Here we go. So five Demi Johns filled up. Okay. Uh, all the different flavour additions. 15 gingerbread biscuits, eight gingerbread biscuits. That's the 200 grams of ground coffee. So the coffee one, I was just saying, if you... That one there? Yeah, that's... Yeah. You, you can see that the coffee's all sitting at the top, so I was yeah. just saying that you're going to get the sort of cafetiere effect where you have to press it down, but you're quite confident it's going to sink. I'm hoping so. He's smiling, so. you can't, he's off camera, he's smiling. I'm hoping so. Yeah, I'm hoping if I cold crash it for long enough, all the coffee will drop to the bottom. Okay. That's the plan. That's what normally happens. It's, it's not let me down yet. And the exciting news is you'll be able to see us taste testing all these, all yeah. these five, uh, alongside the regular milk stout. The chocolate uh, one in a week or two's time. You see the colour of that? The I can, yeah, yeah, the chocolate looks good. It's got like that caramel sort of foam on the top. Yeah. Anyway, and next up, we've got our sanitised keg. Just going to fill that up. All ready to go, sanitised keg. Um, I've got the disconnect on there so that basically I've purged this with CO2. So hopefully we'll have a nice layer of CO2 in there. As we fill this up with beer, CO2 is obviously heavier than oxygen. So the plan is that the CO2 will stay on top of the beer, protecting the beer, and the oxygen will escape out of here. Okay. Transfer. Does that make sense? It does. Cool. Yep. So we're all good to go. Gas connected back into there now. So now we're going to transfer directly from here into the keg. That's and that's the, that's the last step of this uh, this process. That's it, son. Oh, hold on, I want to weigh it as well. Don't I? Here we go. So here we go. We've got our full keg of beer, nineteen twenty liters thereabouts. Um, Conversion on the screen. <laughs> yeah. Um, the last thing we're going to do. Um, it's just to make sure there's no, we want as little oxygen in there as possible. So I'm just going to purge it three times with CO2 at 20 psi to push any oxygen that might still be in there out, just so we've got a nice layer of CO2 on top of it. So just going to get this up to 20 psi. That's quite satisfying. Yeah. Do it three times. Yeah. Is that the industry standard? That's just what I do. <laughs> I think I might have seen it on a YouTube video. Right there. Just stuck to it. And that's it. There we go. Leave it at 20. Excellent. Disconnect it. That's all she wrote.